Graphs are a great way to visualize data in your game. I play a lot of management games, which means that I spend quite a lot of time looking at what is essentially a visualization of a spreadsheet. And whether it's a bar chart, line graph, pie chart, or this thing, plotting data from your game into a more readable format from the player can be an extremely valuable way to communicate what's going on. For instance, a line graph is a pretty common occurrence in a management game as a way to communicate financial data to the player. And whether you're developing a management game or not, at some point in your career, you're probably going to want to draw a graph in Unity's UI system. You'll probably try adding a new game object into your canvas and then add the line renderer component, but discover that line renderers only work on 3D meshes, you idiot. Why would you even think that this would also work with the UI system? <laughs> Hi there, I'm Matt and welcome to Game Dev Guide. In this video, we're going to build a line renderer component that works with Unity's UI system. We're going to start by looking at how we can extend the graphics class to draw custom shapes in our UI and build a basic graphing component. We're then going to use that knowledge to build a line renderer that dynamically plots points on our graph. And of course, we'll then look at how to add some nice animations into the tool as well. So let's get started. All right, so in order to draw lines on a graph, the first thing we're going to need is a graph itself. In earlier versions of this tool, I would just use a square outline sprite like this, tiled with the image renderer. However, the only issue with this is that you're tied to both the size and thickness of the source image you use, which can be problematic, especially if you want the distances of the lines of your graph to mean something. Using a tiled image can be quite tricky to get pixel perfect scaling for your graph coordinates. In developing this video, I actually realized that we can use the line rendering techniques I'm going to talk about to also draw the graph itself, and the process of drawing out the graph is a useful introduction of how to draw shapes in the UI system anyway. So that's where we're going to start. We're going to write a component that dynamically draws a square cell and then tiles that cell based on a grid size. I have a canvas here. Let's add a new game object to it and create a new script called UI Grid Renderer. Then let's have this script extend from the graphics class. This may seem obvious, but it's worth mentioning that Unity's UI system just consists of meshes. So the same concepts apply when trying to draw a custom UI image as they would rendering a mesh in 3D. We give the renderer some vertices and then we connect them with some triangles. The onPopulate mesh method of the graphics class is where our mesh is drawn to the screen. So let's override it and tell Unity to draw out a square. We'll start by clearing the vertex helper cache. Then let's define the dimensions of our area to draw into, which for now is just the height and width of our rec transform. And then let's plot four vertices for each corner of our square and then add them to the vertex helper. Then we'll connect them with the add triangle method. A square is made up of two triangles, so we need to call this method twice and connect up the corresponding vertex numbers. Now we should have a set of vertices connected by two triangles. Wireframe or shaded wireframe mode is a good way to visualize this in our viewport. So that's the gist of rendering an image to the UI system. Ultimately, it's underwhelming, but with this knowledge, there's a lot of flexibility in what we can now draw. We want our mesh to be the outline of a square, so we need to draw an inner set of vertices and connect them up to our original set, creating an outline mesh. We can find the interior vertex positions using a distance value, which we'll call thickness, and our good friend Pythagoras. Then we'll create four more vertices at our internal positions using our calculated value. Now we're going to draw eight triangles to connect up each edge of our shape. In Unity, we should now have a square outline that adapts based on our thickness. To get this to turn into a grid though, we're going to have to iterate over our mesh code and make it a bit more dynamic. Let's add a new vector 2 int called grid size that will determine how many rows and columns our grid will have. In our method, let's define a cell width value and a cell height value based on our total space and grid size. Then we'll write a for loop that iterates over the y axis and nest another for loop inside that iterates over our x axis. We're going to step through each coordinate and draw a cell, so let's add an integer to keep count of our index as we iterate over the grid. And just to keep the code a bit more organized, let's create a new method called draw cell and copy our vertex code into there. This method will take the current X and Y coordinate of our cell, as well as its index. We'll also need to pass in our vertex helper. Finally, all we have to do is localize the position of our cell relative to the X and Y coordinate and pass that into each of our vertices. Then we also create an offset for our vertex numbers 
when we're constructing our triangles. Because we know each cell has 8 vertices, it's as simple as multiplying the current index of our cell by 8. Now, back in Unity, we should have a fully functional grid rendered dynamically. We should be able to change the size of it, adjust thickness, and scale the rect transform, and it should update accordingly. At this point, we've gone through pretty much everything we're going to need to know to make our line renderer tool. It's very much a case of repeating similar steps here to our grid component, but just with fixed points in our transform instead. So let's get stuck in and build out a line renderer, shall we? I want this tool to draw lines for a chart, so I'm going to make my renderer draw relative to a grid size and scale everything accordingly. That way, each point in the line renderer will line up nicely with our grid renderer. Let's keep this easy and start by drawing out a single point. First, we'll use the grid size to calculate the unit width and unit height. Then we'll plot two vertices at each point. We'll turn this into a method so it's easier to work with. We'll place each vertex at the unit width and unit height positions, offset by half of the thickness, so that our line is centered along its point. Once all of the vertices are added, we then just draw the triangles. Because we're only plotting two vertices at a time, we can ignore the last vertex point here. Now we have a line that plots relative to our grid size. One useful thing we could do is have this read directly from our grid component. So let's create a reference to the grid renderer and tell our script to set our grid size if it doesn't match. Now our line renderer moves relative to our grid component. So this is good, but our line is looking a little rough in places. For instance, if we set our point to be flat, it disappears completely. This is because we're currently setting the line along the x-axis. What we need to do is rotate the vertices at each point relative to the next point on the list. This handy function will return an angle between two points that we can use. We can then pass that angle into our function and rotate our vertices at the origin and then offset that by our position. Now we should have a line that updates the angle of our vertices to best draw the points on our line. And that's pretty much all there is to building a line renderer in Unity's UI system. We can now duplicate this a few times and plot out a different number of lines. The great thing about this too is that we can resize our grid element and our lines will stay uniform to the grid. For that final touch, let's also add a bit of animation to our graphic here. This script basically snapshots the line resets it, and then adds a new point at the previous point during each time interval, and then tweens to its location. And now our graph draws itself. Lovely. And that's pretty much all there is for today's video. There's still some quirks here with the line thickness that could be solved by doubling down on the vertices at each point, and that would ensure that the thickness is then uniform, but that also would leave gaps and so would require some sort of end cap functionality. If you're after uniform edges, it's probably a much cleaner way of doing it, but it's a bit too much for this video for now. Hopefully, many of you now have an even better understanding of how to draw meshes in the UI system and can build out your own renderer tools like this. If you haven't already, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Also, if you're interested in more UI videos like this, I've put together an entire playlist for you to peruse at your leisure, as well as another video YouTube thinks you might find interesting. Those are both linked on screen now. Until next time, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you again very soon.